welcome to the stage, Nathan Caton! going on London? You guys all right? Yeah! Good, good, man. Good to be here in central London. Uh, thank you for coming out. And I, I mean as well, thank you for coming out. You know, thank, thank you for you know, spending money to be here. <laughs> you guys have spent money and I appreciate that, man, because you know, the, the economy is at the moment, shall we say, fucked. You know what I mean? Like, like if the pound gets any weaker, Africa are going to do a Live 8 concert for us. You know what I mean? <laughs> that concert's coming, isn't it? You know? We need it, just to pay our gas bills. Um, yeah, man, fucking, what, what a shit storm we find ourselves in right now. You know, like, you know what? I was talking to a mate recently, and uh, I, I never thought I'd ever say this, but you know what? I, I miss David Cameron, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, just for the stability, you know what I mean? It was, it was simpler times. You know what I mean? Because since Cameron, it's just been like the shit show after shit show after shit show, isn't it? You know, obviously we had the Brexit vote, you know, Cameron pissed off, you know, and then Theresa May turned up like a shit supply teacher, you know? <laughs> I was like, fuck, how could this get any worse? And then Boris Johnson went, hello. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still can't believe that guy was our prime minister. There was a time when he was our leader, right? And you know what? People were happy about it as well, that's what I don't get. I remember when he first took over, and people were like, oh, it's gonna be great. Boy, he's in charge. He's a character, he's a character. But yeah, Mr. Bean's a fucking character. <laughs> don't mean that you put him in charge, right? It's just shambles. Like, it got to the point where like, it was so shambolic under Boris, nothing that he did was a shock anymore, right? Like, um, like, do you remember the, uh, the lockdown parties, right? No, yeah, exactly, we were on a lockdown, and people were like, can you believe it? We were trapped indoors, they were having parties. Can you believe it, can you believe it? Yes, man. You're not seeing who's in charge, right? The only thing that surprised me was that they didn't book R. Kelly for the entertainment, you know? <laughs> Just to blow any last moles out of the water, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Oh, gosh, man. Hey, you know what? He nearly came back. He nearly came back for a second go, innit? After he resigned, he nearly came back again. Uh, it's like, dude, what are you doing, right? We're human beings, not goldfish. We remember you, right? <laughs> But the thing is, Liz Trust was so fucking shit. There was a part of us looking at Boris like, yeah, come on in, <laughs> bruv. <laughs> Might as well. That bitch, fucking hell. Liz Trust. I have never seen someone so incompetent that every time they talk, the value of the currency drops. <laughs> like, surely that's a sign you shouldn't be running the country, right? Like, if every time I told a joke, my bank balance got smaller and smaller, I'd shut the fuck up. <laughs> She just kept on going, and it's like, fucking be quiet. I'm trying to book a holiday for fuck's sake. You know what I mean? Oh, <laughs> uh, mate, I mean, yeah, we, we, you know what? The signs were there. We should have known Liz Trust was going to be shit. You know? like I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying that she's a bad omen, but what I will say is the queen survived a lot of shit in her life. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? No, the, queen, the queen survived a lot. You know? The queen survived a world war, you know? She survived the pandemic. Numerous prime ministers came and went, and then Liz Truss turned up, and the Queen was like, fuck it, I'm out, bruv. <laughs> you guys have gone too far with this one. Just <laughs> tell Philip I'm coming. <laughs> but obviously, no, rest in peace to the Queen. I won't take the piss out of that. However, <laughs> what, no, what I will say is, right, I have not seen so much hypocrisy in my life, on like a national scale level, as when the Queen passed away, you know? Like, the same people who were slagging off the monarchy at the Jubilee earlier this year, right? Like, Who's paying for all this shit, man? Fuck the monarchy, fuck them. And then the Queen died, and they're like, oh no, really? Oh, I'm in shock. No, not my Liz. <laughs> wait, you're in, wait, you're in shock? She was 96. What is so shocking to believe about a 96-year-old passing away in their sleep, right? Like, I'll tell you what would've been a shock if she kept on fucking waking up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I'm not being ageist, but when you're 96, I mean, surely every morning that you wake up when you're 96, that's a surprise. <laughs> every morning you're like, guess who's back? <laughs> back again, you know what I mean? Like, come on. She's the queen, not Peter Pan, chill out, you know? There, there was a lot of hypocrisy, right? Myself included, I'm not gonna lie. 
when I first found out about the Queen passing away. At first, I was like, oh man, that's, that's horrific, that's, that's very sad, you know? Like, I'm not, I'm not like a massive fan of the monarchy. Don't love them, but at the same time, I don't hate them. I'm very indifferent, right? But I was like, you know, that's, that's, that's a human being. That's someone's mum, someone's grandma, even someone's great-grandma, you know? If my grandma passed away, I'd be in bits. So you know what? My heart goes out to the royal family. Wish them nothing but peace and comfort during these 12 days of mourning. <laughs> and then they postponed the football. <laughs> It's like, fucking hurry up and bury the bitch, man. What's going on? <laughs> 12 days, man. Stop milking it. Start digging. Come on, man. <laughs> and then they announced that we get a bank holiday. I was like, take all the time we need. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. My point was, Liz Truss is shit. <laughs> yeah, she is, man. Uh, now, now, you know, we've got, we got, we got Rishi. Um, I don't know, I, I, I want to like him, but I, I find it hard to like these politicians nowadays. I feel like, I know, we live in a time where we have like politicians who do and say dumb shit that's totally out of touch with the general public, right? Like, um, like prime example is um, Anne Widdicombe, right? Who, absolutely vile human being, vile politician, right? So, uh, a few years ago, she was actually quoted as saying, one day, science will prove why gay people are gay. So, fucking hell, Anne, chill out. This is 21st century, do you want to join us, you know? Uh, all right, Anne, maybe a reason why some men are gay is because they look at your face and go, nah, that's all right, man, let's go. I'll have the dick, please, right? Fucking <laughs> ugly bitch, honestly, like, I mean, listen, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not gay myself, but I, I don't get homophobia in today's day and age. I don't get how it's still a thing, you know what I mean? Like, um, I'm a big football fan, right? And I remember earlier this year seeing a story about this footballer called Jake Daniels. Right? Some of you might have seen the story. Um, he's the first openly gay player in the professional English leagues. Right? And it was a big story when it came out. It was on Sky Sports News, I remember watching it. And I remember seeing the story for the first time thinking, no offense to the guy, but this is shit. You know? I mean, fair play coming out, but why in 2022 is it a headline to come out as gay? Shouldn't be a headline, innit? You know, like, like the reaction was like, oh, well done, you're so brave, you're so courageous. When, in my opinion, the reaction should have been, all right, what's your point? <laughs> How is you being gay going to help inflation? You <laughs> know what I mean? I don't care about you sucking dick. Look at the price of petrol. <laughs> <laughs> like, it shouldn't be a headline to come out as gay in today's day and age, you know? Especially not in the world of football. Let's be honest. Football fans are fucking gay anyway. <laughs> they are. Like, football fans, give me a cheer. Woo! Yeah, <laughs> gay. <laughs> I'm one of them too, don't worry. Football fans are gay, especially male football fans are gay. Listen, male football fans, let me ask you a question, right? If a footballer scored a goal for your team, right, in the last minute of the last game of the season that won your team the league, you fuck him, right? <laughs> yeah, you would, right? You would. <laughs> exactly. Yep, yep. Credit where credit is you. Yes, you would. I would, right? I would, I would fucking I'd break his back, mate. That's what I'm <laughs> I would fuck him in front of my girlfriend. <laughs> All right, babes, look. <laughs> champion is champion. Is. Mate, I would do him over, I swear to God, mate. Anyway. My point is, it shouldn't be a headline to be gay in 2022, right? In today's day and age, it should not be an issue, right? And I, I know, I, I said, I get annoyed at homophobia. I feel, like, I feel like we should get all homophobic people, right? Put them in a gay nightclub for a night and then let them face their fears. <laughs> you know, like, whatever happens, happens, you know? That way they can see they're people. They've got nothing to worry about. Relax. And I say that because as a straight man, I've been to a gay nightclub many a time. I can hand in my heart say, I have never in my life felt so handsome and appreciated. Oh. Mm, mm, mm. They know how to flatter, my hey. I said, I'm not gay, I didn't do anything, but I did go back to my girlfriend like, babes, you need to up your game. You know? Ooh. Felt like a king back there. Oh. oh, man, but yeah. What a, what a strange world we live in, right? You know, and these, these last few years have just been so surreal, mate. You know, these last few years, I, you know, I've, I've done things in my life in the last few years that I never, ever thought I would do. You know, just, just little things. 
Like, um, like putting on a mask to walk into a bank. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? It's kind of it's fucked up in it. That's surreal. Like, you know, for some of you, it don't mind to be a big deal, but you look like this, fucking mate. <laughs> Like when you're a six foot black guy, that shit is risky as hell. <laughs> just in the bank on my best behaviours and just reaching to get my debit card, miss. <laughs> Please stop crying. <laughs> <laughs> like, if five years ago you told me I'd be at a point in my life where I'm putting on a mask to walk into a bank, I'd be like, what the hell happened to my career, man? <laughs> my mum was right, there's no future in stand-up, you know what I mean? It's, <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, you can do it, yes you can. <laughs> oh man, yeah, man. Wearing a mask in a bank, you know, queuing up outside Tesco like it's a fucking nightclub, you know? We all did that shit in it. That was surreal as hell. Just, you know, just standing outside. Yeah, I heard it's good in there, bruv. Mm. <laughs> Got my club card, I'm good to go. Boss, boss, you know what I mean? Now that shit has scarred me for life, you know? Like now, when I go to Tesco's now, I wear shoes and trousers just so I know I get in. You know what I mean? <laughs> Don't take any chances. Very, very, it's very surreal, you know? Like, the, the, the weirdest one was the uh, social distancing. Obviously, I understood why we had to do it. It was a pandemic, I get it. But it was still weird to think as human beings, we couldn't be close, you know? Just doing, doing the most basic shit. Like, like walking down the street, you know? Say like, for example, I'm, I'm walking down the street, like a, an old white guy, an old white lady walking towards me. As soon as they see me, they stop in fear. They cross over the road to get their distance, you know? <laughs> Surreal. Because <laughs> that never used to happen to me before. <laughs> oh, <mate. laughs> but yeah, that's the world we're living in, though, man. That's the world we're living in, you know? Living in fear, you know? Because it's, it's this new virus, you know, and this, yeah, the world was living in fear. But I don't know, in my opinion, it felt like there were times when there was more fear than there was common sense. You know what I mean? There's certain times when it's like, all right, I understand it's a pandemic, but let's, come on, use your brains, you know? Like um, every, every time a, a new variant came out, prime example, the world went into fear, to panic mode. It's like, calm down, you apply common sense, you know? I remember when um, the, the UK variant one, no, the, the Kent variant, was that what it was? Yeah, yeah, it came from Kent, didn't it? Yeah, <laughs> fuckers. Um, <laughs> I remember when I came out, right? And basically, mainland Europe was shit scared of us, right? Like we had the Lurgies or something, right? To the point they started banning UK travel to those certain countries, you know? I remember uh, France were the first country, right? And I was fine. I was like, France, okay, cool. You know, France is it's a big country in Europe, you know, just over the water. A lot of British people go there. I get that. That's fine. Cool. And then Italy, Spain, and Belgium, they came out, they banned UK travel. And again, I was like, oh, okay, cool. Three big countries in mainland Europe, a lot of British people go there, I get that, cool. But then, Estonia came out. <laughs> I was like, oh, bless. Someone's a bit deluded, aren't they? I mean, <laughs> listen, no offense to Estonia, I'm sure it's a lovely place, but fuck off, you know what I mean, <laughs> like, like Apart from Eurovision and the old football qualifier, I think you are fine. You know, like, like Estonia banning UK travel is like me banning Beyonce from coming to my house. You know what I mean? <laughs> come on, man. Gosh. I get it, but come on. Yeah, there's a lot, a lot, of, a lot of fear going on, man. A lot of fear. And another thing I noticed during this pandemic is uh, just how many bellends we have living amongst us. <laughs> in society, I mean, um, I mean, to be honest, during, during like lockdown one, everyone was a bell in demise, right? Because I know, like, lockdown one broke me a bit. I feel like it turned me into a very angry, bitter person. Like, normally I'm quite laid back, you know, quite chilled out, but I, I noticed that I was getting angry. Like, I noticed I was getting angry because I was, I was getting annoyed at every little thing. Like things that normally don't annoy me, I was getting pissed off at. Uh, prime example, my girlfriend, right? <laughs> I love my girlfriend, right? My girlfriend is a, she's a great person, right? Also, my girlfriend, very indecisive, right? My girlfriend, she's the kind of person, like, that I notice whenever I ask her a question, because she's so indecisive, instead of just answering a question like a normal human being, instead, she would just ask me the same question back. <laughs> now, before the pandemic, right, it wasn't an issue. If anything, it was kind of cute. It was, oh, you're so indecisive, babe. Don't worry, man. Your man's got you. Your man's got you. But then during lockdown, I was like, answer the fucking question, bitch. Right? <laughs> right. 
And they weren't even hard questions, simple shit, you know, like a, are you hungry? Are you hungry? Fucking answer the question, ask you first. <laughs> I'm not gonna judge you. Are you hungry? Yeah, you greedy bitch. Again, no. It's <laughs> answer the question for once. You know what I mean? Um, yeah, I got, I got lockdown. Yes, lockdown. Lockdown broke me, man. Ev everyone was a bellend, right? but there were, there were especially a lot of bellends that I noticed, like just, just out and about and stuff. You know, like um, that, okay, the panic buyers. Remember those guys? Mm -hmm. Guys buying all the toilet roll. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Some of you guys gone a bit quiet all of a sudden. <laughs> <laughs> Talking to the guilty party, what's going on? <laughs> yeah, what was the deal with toilet roll? Right? Like, diarrhea was never one of the fucking symptoms. <laughs> Everyone's going crazy, right? And listen, I know we were like, you know, saluting the NHS and camp for the kills. I get that. That's cool, right? Okay. <laughs> Panic buyers, fucking freaks. <laughs> Listen, I know we were like saluting the NHS and we were coming for the carers, and that's cool, right? But I feel like there's other people who should have been saluted, right? Like supermarket staff, you know? Yeah, because they were working like relentlessly, right? They, they had to deal with those panic buyers, and I salute them. You know? Mainly for having the self restraint, which is slap so just bed and silly. Because you know, if that were me, listen, I wouldn't be able to resist, you know? If I was working in a supermarket and someone turned up to my till with like, 200 toilet rolls in their trolley. I'd be so tempted to follow them back to their car and take a massive shit in their boot. Right? <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing? You got the toilet roll? <laughs> <laughs> Dear kids, man. Yeah, panic buyers, they were getting, they were bad ends, got my nerves. Um, the people who didn't understand the very simple phrase, stay at home. Those bell ends. My, listen, it's not that hard to comprehend. It's like wherever you wake up, stay the fuck there. You know what I mean? <laughs> so many people during the pandemic, during the lockdowns, just didn't get it. It's like, just stay at home. I remember seeing a video on social media, right? Um, it was a, it would have been the summer of 2020, right? It was, it was during a heat wave, which probably explains why so many people couldn't follow the fucking rules, right? Because whenever we have heat in this country, we go mental. Because <laughs> you know, we, we don't get it a lot. So when we, go, when we get it, we, just, yeah, we go crazy, right? Personally, I blame weather forecasters. I feel like they're shit stirrers. <laughs> because whenever it's hot, they don't just tell us that it's hot. They tell us other information that we don't need to know, which just eggs us on. Like one <laughs> classic thing they always do is um, they compare somewhere in the UK to somewhere else in the world, <laughs> like it's on the same level. You ever seen that? <laughs> With like a, if you look, you'll see London is one degree warmer than the Caribbean. So yeah, for 25 fucking minutes, mate. <laughs> it's night time back there, that's why. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, who are you trying to fool here? <laughs> None of my cousins in the Caribbean are calling me up going, near town, let's swap places. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just relax, it's gonna drizzle soon, man. You can't, you can't compare the UK to the Caribbean when it's hot. It's, it's not the same, okay? Like, you know, like, in the Caribbean, when it's hot, do you know what happens? Nothing. <laughs> Let's get on with life, right? Here in the UK, we have a, what, 48 hours of 35 degrees. Fucking stand still, you know what I mean? People can't go to work because it's too hot. You know what I mean? Ginger people have to hibernate. No. <laughs> you know what I mean? People jumping in the river to have a swim. And when I say people, white people. <laughs> No, I'm not trying to do those black, white jokes, but I'm just saying, like, whenever you turn on the news and you see a story about someone being swept away by a river, you know who it is, you know what I mean? <laughs> but yeah, something about, something about heat, you know, we go, we go mental, right? So I said, I saw the story, right? Um, it was on social media. Um, it, was, it was a video on social media. It was during the, the heat wave, right, in 2020, right? The video, it was, uh, it was Westminster Bridge, right? Just down the road, right? Now, bear in mind, it was lockdown. We're meant to be staying at home. The bridge was rammed full of people clapping for carers. Yeah. Not realising the irony about what they're doing. <laughs> so, yeah, let's salute our carers by giving them even more work. Get closer. Right? <laughs> I'll be honest, I saw all those people on the bridge, and my first thought was, where's a terrorist when you really need one? <laughs> Too far, is it? Come on now. I'm, am I the only person? 
have you no, okay, listen, no, I can't be the only one. Like, are you trying to tell me you've never seen those, like, like those, those uh, climate just stop oil protesters in the middle of the street? You never seen them and thought, vroom, vroom, you know, no, never, never. <laughs> Fucking liars. <laughs> uh, so yeah, those bad ends, you don't understand that. Stay at home, right? Well, do, you know, do you know who pissed me off the most though? Like during like, the lockdowns, during, during this pandemic, who's really got on my nerves? Conspiracy theorists. Yes. <laughs> now, listen, before I go on, listen, I, I realise there may be some conspiracy theorists in tonight, you know, there's always a few, and that's perfectly fine. If you're in, good evening. <laughs> you're very welcome. Just FYI, you're not going to like this next bit. <laughs> they're fucking idiots, isn't it? My gosh. They're dickheads. You know, you know what's weird? Like, I used to like them. Like, like before the pandemic, you know, I'd, I'd, I'd enjoy an odd conspiracy theory. I'd listen, I'd be, I'd be oh, okay, I'd be intrigued, right? Whereas now, has anyone else like me heard so much shit that now they're just conspiracy theoried out? No, like for me now, conspiracy theories are like baby pictures. <laughs> if you got them, that's great. Just keep that shit to yourself. <laughs> but that's the thing, they never do. They always want to tell you shit, you know what I mean? No, I, I, I don't get it. Like, when the people start thinking they were smarter than the experts, that didn't happen, did it? Like before the pandemic, that weren't a thing. Like if you're on a plane, you know, you wouldn't go into the cockpit, hey, pilot, pilot, take a left here, and I'll shortcut, yeah? No. <laughs> but during the pandemic, everyone thought they knew more, right? You know, like the, the, the vaccine, prime example. So many people thought they were medical experts, you know? No, man, I'll trust my vaccine. No, it's Bill Gates. <laughs> it's Bill Gates, isn't it? Yeah, no. It's 5G, bruv. It's 5G, in it? It's 5G, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, man. No, vaccines take years to make. Years. They made this one in only 10 months. You tell me, why is that? <laughs> why is that? Because <laughs> it's a pandemic, you prick, that's why. It's called working in an emergency. If your house is on fire and you're inside it, wouldn't you move a bit faster than fucking normal? <laughs> sake, mate. Ugh. Yeah, these conspiracy theories, they get on my nerves, man. They really do. I've, just, I've, I've met too many over the last few years, and it's just it's pushed me over the edge, where now I'm like, I don't care anymore, you know? I remember one morning, um, I was at the gym, all right? It's early in the morning, all right? Uh, I'm signing in with um, the, uh, remember the, uh, the NHS Test and Trace app? Remember that? The app that we all downloaded, and then, <laughs> then deleted very quickly. <laughs> remember that shit? <laughs> you must isolate. Fuck off, man. I ain't <laughs> delete. Um, yeah, so basically, I was signing in with that test and trace app, right, into the gym. And then this guy, he doesn't know me, but he sees that I'm using the app, right? And he just walks up to me and he goes, bruv, don't do it, yeah? It's all about control, innit? I was like, okay, well, first of all, first of all, sir, it's, uh, it's 8 a.m. Right? We don't know each other. Why the fuck are we talking? <laughs> like, who talks to a random stranger at 8 a.m.? What kind of fucking psycho are you? Like, <clears throat> I don't even talk to people that I know and love <laughs> at 8 a.m. Like, do you know how many times I've snapped at my girlfriend for trying to talk to me early in the morning? Like, I'm in bed, and she's like, babes, babes, I'm off to work now. And I'm like, well, fucking go with it. <laughs> what do you want, permission? It's not Saudi Arabia, you can leave. <laughs> I just want to say I love you. Piss off, man, I swear. Yeah, that's for people that I know and love, okay? This random dickhead thinks I want to talk to him in the gym. I don't want to talk to him. I don't know him, I don't trust him. The reason why I don't trust him is because his body looks way out of proportion. <laughs> you know you get those meatheads at the gym. Yeah, I, I, I don't trust that. I don't get, how is, how is that possible, you know what I mean? How is it possible to have like 50 inch shoulders and then five millimeter ankles? Like, <laughs> like my man, you look like a bungalow on stilts. Like, how are you giving me advice in life? But he was like, he's like, yeah, don't lose the app, man. Every time you check in somewhere, they're gonna know they're following you. Is that what you want? I don't give a shit, bruv. <laughs> I'll be honest, my life is not that exciting. No, if anyone's following me, like no one's gonna be sat in MI5 going, guys, red alert. The stand-up comedian Nathan Caton has checked into the Yankee candle shop again. 
<laughs> He's got a bomb. No vanilla cupcake. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's my life. I, fuck, I fucking I love a scented candle, man. Like during, during the lockdown, that's all I was doing, just like buying scented candles. Honestly, I, I love, like, give me a chair if you like scented candles. <laughs> hey, they're fucking great, right? Mate, listen, you know what? I would go as far as saying scented candles for me in my 30s are like what porn was for me in my 20s. <laughs> it's my go to now. You know what I mean? Like my 20s, if I had a night in by myself, uh, just whacking some porn, isn't it? Huh? That's what guys in their 20s do. Right, guys? <laughs> right. Thanks for the backup. <coughs> you lying fuckers. Right. <coughs> no, come on, come on. Let me all know. My, my man, what's your name? Max. How you doing, Max? If you don't want me asking, Max, how old are you? Twenty-two. Twenty-two. You know what I'm talking about, right? <laughs> mate. I'm surprised you're here tonight. <laughs> Not at home working in the forearms and shit, mate. <laughs> Is your girlfriend here? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. okay. <laughs> Awkward. Um, <coughs> No, but cool. Okay, Max, let me ask you, right? Do you live by yourself? No. Who, who do you live with? Parents. Parents? Oh, it's the sneaky ones, right? <laughs> We've all been there, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Someone in the door. Okay, cool, cool, cool. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. Max, don't mind me asking, mate. If you've got a house to yourself, right? You get an urge. As a man, you do what you have to do, right? You take care of yourself. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you looking at her? Answer, look at me. <laughs> Yes, you do. That's, that's, you know, you're 22. That is perfectly fine. That's perfectly fine, Max. All right, Max, one last question. What's, what's your scene of choice? What do you go for? <laughs> it's all family. It's fine. Yeah. Everything. Everything. You animal. <laughs> Mate, oh, have some decor. <laughs> just, just give me all of it. All the pussy. All the pussy. All of it. Okay, that's fine. No, that's fine. I said, 20, 22, mate, do what you got to do. When I was 22, yeah, man, I was all over it. Find a house to myself, put some porn, have a great night. Slash 90 seconds. Right? <laughs> but now, in my 30s, I'll be honest, the game has changed. Right? And now, I'll be honest, I can't get turned on by porn now. Um, mainly because I don't find the storylines plausible. <laughs> and it's weird. Like, when, when I was 22, I didn't even know it's a storyline. Whereas now, I'm like, listen, before you make me come, can you give me a narrative, please? You know? <laughs> just take me on a journey or something. I'm going to believe them in love. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's ridiculous. I find it, I find it too ridiculous, even for porn. Like the, the, the classic repairman scene, right? We all know that repairman scene. It's a very prominent scene in the world of porn. The repairman comes over to fix something, then he fixes it, right? And then the woman's like, oh, um, I don't seem to have any cash on me at the moment maybe we could come to some sort of other arrangement. <laughs> and next thing you know, she's on her knees sucking his dick for their life, right? And I'm just screaming at my laptop, bank transfer, back him, back him. <laughs> He'll get the money the same day, tell him to cut your mouth. <laughs> yes. I get annoyed instead of turned on, so. Scented candles, that's my thing now, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, I love a scented candle now. <laughs> that vanilla cookie, mmm. Oh. It's, it's the burn time, 30 hours, get in. So <laughs> a Yankee candle or a wanky candle, I'm gonna fuck it up. <laughs> mm. I love a scented candle, honestly. No, you know, you know how many arguments scented candles? <laughs> It's okay, it's okay, but I didn't realise you were that passionate about scented candles. <laughs> so, fucking wanking over candles, what are you doing? <laughs> Smell that shit, don't wank over it. <laughs> it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's good, it's cool, it's cool, it's cool. No, no, it's okay, it's fine, it's okay. <laughs> Get out! No, it's fine, it's okay. It's probably fine, it's cool. I'm saying that, man. Like, do you know how many scented candles, like, do you know how many arguments? like scented candles saved me getting into, you know what I mean? Like, so scented, like I said, in lockdown, all I was doing was buying scented candles, right? Because it, it, was, it was like, it was my zen, you know what I mean? Because there was something like potential, like, you know, flashpoints for me. Like, a, um, I remember I got into an argument, right? Uh, it was around the, uh, the time of the, the George Floyd murder, right? Unfortunate incident, obviously horrific, right? Um, and uh, obviously that kick-started the whole the Black Lives Matter protest and the movement, right? Which I've noticed, right? A lot of people get very angry and triggered by the words Black Lives Matter. Don't know why. 
Like, it's not saying black lives matter more. It's not saying only black lives matter. It's simply saying black lives matter. But people still get really, really like, why is it called black lives matter? Surely all lives matter. So yeah, okay, yes, obviously all lives matter, but you're missing the point, you know? Like, like okay, when it's Black Friday, you don't walk to a shop full of customers going crazy and be like, guys, calm down, all Fridays are important. <laughs> It's called context. So yes, obviously all lives matter, but in this instance, it's not all lives who have been targeted for the color of their skin, or seen as aggressive, or seen as threats, simply for being black, right? And I, I, I say that, because it's, it's happened to me a few times, which um, it's annoying, but also very funny, because anyone who knows me will testify, I am soft as shit. <laughs> I am, I'm, I'm a mummy's boy, okay? I'm a big teddy bear. I, I've, I've never been in a fight in my life, mainly because I can't fight for shit. <laughs> Seriously, I can't. Like, if we're in a fight, I've got nothing. All I can do is afterwards, I'll tell my mum, she'll fuck you up. <laughs> I'm not hard, but people, when they see me, a six foot black guy, and make the assumption that I'm hard, you know? I look at a tough guy here. Yeah? One, one of the mandem. <laughs> the fuck you talking about mandem? I'm from the main streets of Greenford, Middlesex. <laughs> no, a leafy suburb where top boy <laughs> means head prefect. <laughs> How hard do you think I am? Honestly, like, yeah, it happens. I remember once, right, I was out in a bar. Um, I was there just, just having some drinks, just people watching, just been nosy, right? Um, other side of the room, I see these two guys, right, and I could tell they was about to kick off between them. I mean, I've never, never been in a fight, but I know what they look like, I've seen them, right? So I see these two guys, I'm like, yeah, it's about to kick off. Eventually, it does. Just pushing and shoving, people are then moving out of the way, and then this random white dude, right, I don't know him, but he comes and he stands right next to me on my right shoulder, right? And he just goes, I'll just stand here by you, mate. In case it kicks off over here, innit? So, who the fuck do you think I am, bro? I'm not Black Panther, I've got nothing for you. I'm like, bro, unless you can run as fast as me, and since we're apparently making cultural assumptions, I'm gonna assume you can't. <laughs> You, my friend, are fucked. Right. Yeah, so I'm, I'm not a fighter. I cannot fight for shit, right? My, 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 only, uh, my only saving grace is that I can act, you know? I'm a comedian, I'm a performer, so I know how to put on a charade, right? Do it with confidence, and sells, you know what I mean? If it, if it kicks off, I can act like I know what I'm doing, you know what I mean? I can be like, yeah, what, what, this one, yeah, what, what, what? <laughs> See? <laughs> Do that shit all the time. Do something about it. Do something about it. What, blood? What? <laughs> and that shit works. In particular, on white people. <laughs> you guys are very gullible, mate. You fall for that shit. Like, yeah, no trouble. Yeah, no trouble. No trouble. Yeah, walk away. Walk away. Walk. walk. And they walk. As soon as they're gone, I'm like this. Oh my gosh, that was close. <laughs> oh, what am I like? Why do I tease myself? Yeah. But no, the truth is, I am soft as shit, right? But, you know, I get the assumption that I'm hard chucked to my face all the fucking time, right? And that's why we say things like Black Lives Matter. It's like, don't judge me, you know, because of my appearance, because of the colour of my skin. Judge us for our characters, right? But, you know, you said, people get very angry and riled up with those words, Black Lives Matter. I remember getting, I got into an argument um, on Facebook with this, uh, this, this one white lady, right? Uh, she got uh, very annoyed, right? Basically, I put up a post just saying, you know, I support Black Lives Matter. I'm not saying that Black Lives are more important. I'm just saying that, you know, we like equality, right? That's all. Well, I didn't think it was a very triggering post, right? But she got very triggered. She sent me a private message, right? Which um, I should have known it was going to be fucked up, right? Because, <laughs> no, you know, like, when you, when you go to messages, you see, like, the first few words of the message, right? The first three words were, you black people, right? <laughs> Yeah, which is never complimentary, is it? It's, it's never something like, you black people really can season food. No. It's, it's always going to be something messed up, right? I opened it, and she, she, she said, you black people need to stop moaning. You don't know how good you've got it. The most discriminated person in the world right now is the white woman. 
We get called Karen, even when our name is not Karen. <laughs> I know how to apply to that shit. I was like, mm, Karen, please, send it. <laughs> what are you talking about, man? No, it's just, black Lives Matter is not saying that black lives are more important, right? I see it as just wanting equality, right? That's what we want, just, just equality, you know? And you know what? The first thing we should do in order to get equality, in my opinion, scrap Black History Month, right? That's right, I said it, mm -hmm. right? I know that sounds weird as a black person to say scrap it, but I, I personally, I don't like Black History Month. Hear me out, and if I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong, right, and I'll hold my hands up, but hear me out. Instead of having Black History Month, right, why don't we just have black history in history any time of the fucking year, right? <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, why? Why do we have a month where we're just like patronized and condescended to? Like, oh, look at black people. Aren't they great? <laughs> we're great all year round, you prick. You know? <laughs> That's what Black History Month feels like now. It feels like it's, like, like it's a, a box ticking exercise, you know, just to suit the agenda. You know what I mean? No, and I think maybe because you know, I do comedy and, you know, there's it's, it's a lot of box ticking and stuff going on, a lot of agendas going on, but that's how it feels, you know? Like ev every year, the same thing happens. Like I, remember, I remember a few years ago, uh, there was a one, one producer that I was, I, was trying to, I was trying to work with, right? Um, I really liked his stuff. I thought maybe we could work together, a little project, right? I sent him um, pictures and treatments and my gig list, tour dates. Didn't reply to anything, didn't come to any shows, right? Then October rolls around. He sends an email to my agent. Hi, um, I'm booking this show and I would love to have Nathan on this month. It would be great. So, really? <laughs> this month? <laughs> In October, I wonder fucking why. <laughs> <laughs> like, what, what, why now? Why only now in October? Hmm? What, you think black people are only available in October? <laughs> you think we're unavailable the other 11 months of the year? You think we're in hibernation? Hmm? Come out for Norton Hill Carnival, then go back? <laughs> <laughs> so no, but I'm not gonna help you, you know, tick a box and pat yourself on the back about how you're not racist, okay? Listen, if you really care about black people, give me the same opportunity in April. So, Long story short, I did the show. <laughs> uh, no, listen, listen, I've got moles, but I've also got a mortgage, so fuck off. I like my house. It's got nice things there, you know. Like a shower, so I can wash away all my shame and guilt. Um, but yeah, that's uh, British television, man. So there is a lot, of, uh, a lot of box ticking, a lot of agendas, you know. I, I got into trouble uh, about a year or so ago. Um, I, was, uh, I was working on a, a CBB show, right? Because um, my career's on fire. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah, I did not think that would be the, the destination when I first started doing comedy. Um, but yeah, I was working on a, a CBB show, right? Uh, I've got in trouble with, uh, with the BBC. They, they accused me of being uh, discriminating, right? Because I wasn't, I wasn't ticking the boxes and stuff. So basically, um, I was working on a, it was a Christmas script. And the line that got me into trouble was, hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. It is now time to find out who our mystery guest is who will be turning on our Christmas lights. That was the line, right? Had it in the script, sent it off, didn't think anything of it. About a week or so later, having a routine feedback meeting, and then the script editor and producers there, there on Zoom call, and they're like, uh, Nathan, um, that line is actually very offensive. You cannot say hello, Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, okay? Here, we have to be gender inclusive. So, can you change it to hello everyone? Otherwise, that's discriminating. And I was like, are you taking a piss? <laughs> it's a CBB show, okay? It's three and four year olds. You're trying to tell me three and four year olds are gonna be triggered. <laughs> They're gonna be like, mommy, daddy, what about the non-binaries? No, like, come on, I'll see. but they, they made me change it. So I did, I changed it, I changed it to hello everyone. It is now time to find out who our mystery guest is who will be turning on our Christmas lights. Please welcome Prince Andrew. <laughs> I was thought, if I'm going to be offensive, I'm going to do it properly. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I got, like I said, I got very bitter, man. I got very, very bitter during, during lockdown, lockdown one. Um, I said, I spent, I spent uh, my, my, my lockdowns with, uh, with my girlfriend, right? I don't know if anyone here spent their lockdowns with their partner, but um, mm -hmm. it's fucking hard, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah. It's, a, it's a test, man. It really was, man. Like, I mean, the, the amount of times in lockdown, like, especially lockdown one especially, I caught myself looking at my girlfriend like, I love you, but just fuck off. You know what I mean? <laughs> I wouldn't say fuck off, not fuck off in a bad way. It's like, just do one, innit? Like, <laughs> go in a room that I'm not, you're bellend, right? It was, it was hard, right? But it was hard for me and my girlfriend because, like, um, it, was, it, was, it was very new for us, right? Um, like, before the pandemic, like, we have, we have opposite working lives. My girlfriend, she's a school teacher, I'm a comedian, you know, so during the day, I'm at home, she's at work, you know. In the evening, she comes home, I'm going out to work, you know. Um, after my gigs, I come home, she's fast asleep, you know. Next morning, she wakes up to go to work, I'm fast asleep. So, turns out, we, just, we loved not seeing each other. <laughs> Uh, it was great. And then lockdown came around, I was like, oh, fucking you again, you know? <laughs> right? it was, yeah, it was hard. So I, I used to do little things um, to try and, like, you know, get away or have like, my, own little, like, my own space. Um, yeah, so one thing I used to do, right, to try and get away from my girlfriend, right? But uh, in the mornings, I'd wake up like an hour and a half, maybe two hours before my girlfriend. In that time, I would do something for me, you know? Like, uh, like play, some, play some FIFA on the PlayStation, you know, I'd work out, lift some weights, you know what I mean? Uh, light some scented candles, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Have a great old time, you know what I mean? Yay! You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I'd have a ball, right? It was great. I'd have some, I'd have some Nathan time. But then every time the same thing would happen. At some point, my girlfriend should walk into the room, she'd be like, morning babes, and I'd be like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> I'm not saying that I want my girlfriend dead. Of course not. No, I just don't want her to wake up, that's all. <laughs> uh, if you're watching this, I love you, babes. Uh, no, listen, I do. I, I don't want to make it sound like I don't love my girlfriend. I do. My girlfriend is amazing, okay? She's honestly the, the, the best person for me. She's, uh, she's gorgeous, she's caring, she's sweet, you know? She, she, she's a saint just for, like, putting up with me. Because I'm not an easy person to be in a relationship with, okay? I admit that. No, I'm OCD, stubborn, you know, I'm, a, I'm, I'm immature, or as, as my girlfriend calls it, emotionally unavailable. <laughs> <coughs> yeah, that's what she says, you know. It's, babe, you don't talk about your feelings, babes. You don't talk about your feelings. You're emotionally unavailable. And my response is always, you're emotionally unavailable. <laughs> <laughs> uh, She's right, no, she's right, though. I, I am, I am. I don't, I don't talk about my feelings. I struggle to talk about my, how I really feel, and instead, I just disguise it with sarcasm or humour and try and get out of it, right? Um, I do it all the time, you know? Like, um, like my, my girlfriend, right? she, has a, she has an illness called lupus, right? Which, uh, yeah, if you don't know it, it's, a, it's an autoimmune illness where basically, it's like her body attacks itself, and that makes her immune system much weaker, right? It's, I mean, it's not really subject for comedy, but... <laughs> Fuck it, it's material. Right? <laughs> Her loss, my game. You know what I mean? <laughs> I told you I'm a prick, man. I'm immature. <clears throat> um, no, but the truth is, I do take it very seriously. I do, right? I do. I remember um, before she was diagnosed as lupus, when she started having symptoms, um, it, was, it was actually quite scary because we didn't know what was going on, but we knew something was wrong. Because like, she had like, um, body rashes, like, rashes literally from head to toe, she had fatigue. But she struggled to get out of bed um, in the morning, so much, so much so that she ended up losing her job as a teacher because she was taking so, much, so, much, so many days off, right? And then the worst thing was that her eyesight started deteriorating, right? And then for the best part of like six to nine months, we were bouncing around from hospital to hospital trying to see all these different doctors to work out what the hell was going on. Very scary stuff. And I remember one time, I pulled up into a hospital car park, um, I turned the car off, I look at my girlfriend, and she just sat there in silence. As, as you can imagine, with all this stuff going on, I'm like, babes, you all right? And she goes, what's happening to me? I mean, like, do you think this is serious? And in my head, right, what I wanted to say was, babes, listen, you are going to be fine, okay? You are going to get through this. Said, no, 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 we are going to get through this, okay? Together, <clears throat> I'm going to be there with you every step of the way because I love you. But what came out of my mouth <coughs> was, babes, it cost £5.50 to park for half an hour. <laughs> it's best be fucking serious. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> I'm immature. I'm immature. I struggle to talk about my feelings. I'll just be, be silly instead. That's my, that's my, that's my cop out. That's my girlfriend. She's, she's amazing. 
she puts up with that shit. Right? She, she puts up with my shit both like metaphorically and literally. Oh. Okay, let me tell you a story, my story right? <clears throat> this was like when we like, our first problem when we first, I don't know, four or five months of dating, right? Uh, it was our first getaway. We had like a little, little hotel break. It's the last day of our trip, okay? It's early in the morning, uh, we're at the breakfast. It was a breakfast buffet, right? Now, I'm the kind of person, right? I'm very greedy. When I see the word buffet, instead, it turns into the word challenge. <laughs> it's like, I can just eat food and they carry on bringing out more. Fucking challenge accepted, right? <laughs> so I just go for it, okay? I get to the cereals, all right? I wanna have some cereal. Um, I'm looking for uh, some, uh, some milk, right? But what you need to know is I'm lactose intolerant, okay? Yeah. So yeah, dairy is not my friend. I, I, I can't handle dairy, okay? Um, I remember once with an ex-girlfriend, right, um, in the bedroom, she pulled out some whipped cream. Right? She's like, let's see how filthy we can be. <laughs> she found out. <laughs> she did not go well. Uh, yeah, so I can't handle dairy, right? So uh, I'm looking, I'm at this buffet breakfast, I'm looking for like a, like a lacto-free oat milk, almond milk, you know, some, some, a dairy-free alternative. There wasn't any. All they had was regular milk, right? I thought, it's a buffet. I'm not going to back down, right? <laughs> I'll have a little bit, put in my cereal, it'll be fine. Long story short, it weren't fine. <laughs> About 45 minutes later, we're back in the hotel room. My girlfriend, she's, uh, she's packing. I'm in the bathroom, just, you know, emptying myself, right? <laughs> uh, I do have to do, clean up, and then I come out, I start packing my bags too. About a minute after I've come out, my girlfriend goes, Babe, is that you? I was like, oh, shit, oh, oh, I, I thought I closed the door. She goes, the door's closed, <laughs> still coming through. And bear in mind, this is the first time that, you know, she's experienced this. It's still quite new in our relationship, right? I'm freaking out. I panicked. And I just went, um, okay, if you're going to dump me, just tell people I cheated on you. <laughs> <laughs> no idea why I said that. It was like, I would, why would people think I was unfaithful than unable to digest semi skim milk? Oh, uh, man. Yeah, so my, my girlfriend, she, she, she's, she's amazing. She really is. She puts up with my shit, you know, in every sense of the word. Right? And, and lockdown was another example. You know, lockdown was very tough for me as a comedian. Obviously, all my work just went, so I was stuck at home, not knowing what I was going to do. All right? Um, but my girlfriend, she, you know, she kind of just, just made an effort, you know, and we, end, we ended up having a good time. I thought, you know what, it's a sh shit situation, let's make, the, let's make the best of it. Let's do things that we never normally get to do. So we did, like, a, like cooking new cuisines, because we never have the time to do it, you know. Or like, um, even little things like having end of work drinks, right. We ended up having a, a decent time in lockdown, right. Um, so much so, we came out of the first lockdown probably happier and stronger, right. So, you know, we can survive this, we can survive anything. Lockdown two and three came, piece of piss. And I was like, wow, this girl must be the one for me. And that's why uh, December 2021, after all those lockdowns, I ended up asking my girlfriend to be my wife. Right? Yeah. Um, and well, thanks for the applause, but you don't know what she said. Uh, <laughs> no, I'll, 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 t I'll tell you what she said, right? Um, so I, I proposed to my girlfriend. Uh, to be honest, it was a long time coming been together for like a decade, right? <laughs> yeah, people will go, wait, a decade? How did it take you that long to propose? Uh, well, main thing is, uh, so my, my, my girlfriend, she's, a, she's Indian, right? Um, she, she's from a, a large Indian family. I am from a large Caribbean family, right? And I don't know if you've ever been to an Indian or Caribbean wedding, mm -hmm. uh, so many people turn up, right? Mm -hmm. You need a decade's worth of income to pay for that <laughs> shit. <laughs> That's right, mate. Our, our wedding day is going to resemble the opening ceremony of the Commonwealth Games. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I finally, I finally, I finally did it. She, she was dropping hints, though. She was, you know, like, like we'd be out shopping, and like, um, if like we walk past a jewelry shop, she'll stop by the window. she be like, babes, hypothetically speaking, if you're going to buy me any one of these things, which one would you buy me? <laughs> And I'll be like, oh, for fuck's sake, man, the cheapest one, now let's go. <laughs> I'm saying the candle shop is over there, isn't it? <laughs> but no, I finally did it, I finally did it. Um, 
I took my girlfriend uh, after Christmas. I took her to, to Edinburgh, a little post-Christmas trip, right? The reason why Edinburgh is because um, that's where we had our first date, right? Y yeah, yeah. <laughs> Who's emotionally unavailable now? Um, <laughs> it's still me. Um, yeah, that's where we had our first date. So I thought, what better place, you know, to propose? Bring it full circle, right? Now, if you've never been to Edinburgh, I highly recommend it. It's a, it's a beautiful city. And there's a, there's a mountain there called Arthur's Seat, right? Mm -hmm. Apparently it's called that because that's where King Arthur used to go to overlook the whole city, right? Um, so I thought, you know, what, what better place to pop the question? You know, we'll be able to have, like, panoramic views of a city that we both love, you know? On the flip side, if she says no, I can push her off, you know what I mean? It'd <laughs> <coughs> be great. So we hiked up, and then we found, like, a, a little spot to ourselves, um, had, like, a, a little champagne picnic, you know? And then um, at the end, as we were getting ready to leave, I did a traditional thing, right? I grabbed her hand, got down on one knee, pulled out the box. I was like, babes, I love you. Like, proper love you. Like, scented candles love you. you know? <laughs> Listen, you are the only one for me. The only one I want to be with for the rest of my life. So, do you want to marry me? And she looked me dead in the eye, and she went, do you want to marry me? <laughs> Ha, ha, ha.